Hey guys, welcome back. Hope you're doing well. Today I'm in Luminar Neo and I'll be talking about the masking options that are in Luminar Neo. I get a lot of questions about masking and honestly, I think it is probably the skill that if you learn it will have the greatest impact on your edits and you know give you better outcomes. And the reason why is because masking is all about control. It's about controlling edits, where they go in the photo and that sort of thing. Um, you may have seen previous videos where I talk about global versus local edits. Uh, by which I mean global edit means uh, it impacts the entire photo. A local edit, of course, is specific or targeted to a certain area in the photo. And that's really what masking does for you. It helps you isolate a certain part of a photo and apply an edit there. And what that really is, as I said already, is about control. You're making sure that you're specific and targeted with your edits. That's what we're doing today. And I'm going to show you how it works, uh, all four kinds of masking. So here is a photo from Iceland. And it started like that, The raw. this is a raw file, and it's currently like that. And I'm on the Edits tab. You can see I used uh, Develop Raw and Super Contrast, and then I erased some spots. And so I did a little bit of light work and a little bit of temperature work, and it started like that, and I'm like that. And what I want to do now is start showing you how I kind of approach an image. And so the first thing I want to do here is show you a linear gradient. So I'm going to get structure and I'm going to go to about 30 something. Let's say, you know, 31. That looks good. Now that's currently applying across the entire photo. I don't want it to. I just really want it on the bottom of the photo. I go to masking. I go to linear gradient. And we'll go through all four of these, not in order necessarily, but I'm going to start with a linear gradient. And what you do is you click and drag. So you just click a point and then you drag up if you want to go uh, have the mask below and you do it the opposite if you want to have the mask above. You can also flip it if you need to and that sort of thing. But in this case, I'm going to leave it about like that. Now there's different areas here. This bottom line, you get the full effect where the red is greatest. Uh, so below that line, but bottom line to center line, it starts to fade. Center line to top line, it fades completely. And above the top line, it's gone. Now this, uh, what I call the gradient zone is expandable. So you can just move that line up or down to either uh, make a smoother transition or uh, like a greater smoother transition would be like that. Whereas like this would be a really abrupt transition. I'm going to go kind of medium here. And all I want to do is apply this structure to kind of the lower part of the photo, something about like that. And I like what I have, but you will notice uh, because I'm adding structure, I'm hitting that iceberg and all that sort of stuff in the foreground, but I'm missing the top of that. And so what I'm going to do is back out of linear gradient and then go into brush. You can actually stack these together. So even though I used a linear gradient, I'm in the same instance of structure AI. I can now go in with a brush and just complete that little bit. So I'm going to come over here and I'm just going to kind of paint in here with the brush and uh, fill in that area because it was also, that was my gradient zone. So it's slightly fading in that top part of the uh, chunk of ice. I don't want it to, I want it to be solid there. And so I'm going to do something about like that. So you can combine those two. And when I talk about masking, it's basically painting in an edit and a brush, just like a painter would use to brush in certain colors or shapes into a painting in certain areas. That's what you're doing with the brush mask. You can adjust size, softness, and strength. We're not going into all of that. I do have a masking masterclass video. You might want to check out there where I go into a little bit more detail about things. This video is about the uh, demonstration and explaining the different tools and showing you how I use them in my workflow. So if you take a look at the before and the current state, I've applied structure where I want it. I'm going to go ahead and click close and be done with that. Now I'm going to go to develop. And what I want to do here is go into masking and get brush. And all I want to do is paint into these icebergs because I want to do a few things in order to make them pop. Okay. So with a little brush masking, I've got my mask looking like that. I've brushed that in and now I'm going to go make the edit. So the first thing I want to do is brighten these a little bit. So I'm going to do about a 0.3. I'm going to add a little bit of contrast and I'm going to take the temperature slightly down, just like a negative one. I'm going to bump the vibrance a little bit, something like that, and bump up the sharpening. And so all I've done is isolate those two chunks of ice because they are the subject and I want to pop them a little bit. And so I've made them brighter, a little crisper, that sort of thing. So there it is before and there it is now thanks to a brush mask. So I've done that. And what I want to do is use that mask again. And that's one of the cool things about masking is once you've made a mask, you can just copy it and paste it into other tools. So you just click on masking, you go into mask actions and you click copy. 
And now what I'm going to do is go into Enhance AI and I'm going to paste that mask. So then you just go into Mask Actions and Paste. If I click on Show, you will see that there's my mask from that previous tool. I'm going to click Show again to hide that. I'm going to go into the uh, actual sliders and I'm going to come over here and I'm going to bump this up pretty much. I'm going to go to about 50 there with Accent AI. But if you look at the before, there it is a little bit darker, even with that uh, exposure bump that I did in the last tool, which was Develop. And now it looks better, right? They really do pop. And that's one of the things about Accent AI. It's a great tool, but I always recommend using it with the mask because it can do a lot to a photo. And I generally don't want to overdo anything uh, except maybe in certain targeted areas. That's why masking with Accent AI, I think, is a great, great move. And now that I've done that, I'm actually going to use that again. So remember, I've got that mask already copied kind of into my uh, clipboard, let's call it. I'm going to go paste it again. So um, because I haven't done any other clearing of that mask, I've still got that mask. So if I click uh, show, you can see I've got the same mask. I'm back in structure and um, I'm going to use structure again in the, in the mid to high 30s, this time targeted just to those specific icebergs. Whereas the first time I used structure, it was the entire foreground, including the beach and the waves that are receding and the icebergs. But now I've isolated it, hit it a couple of different ways develop Accent AI and structure, and really just trying to get those to pop off the screen. And they're definitely getting better. Now I'm going to go into develop again. And I used to develop a lot. In fact, I did a video a while back where I used it, I think, seven or eight times on a single photo. And that was all I used. You can check that out there. But I'm going to go get a brush. And this time I'm going to paint into the sand because I want to make some adjustments just to that sand. Now I recommend being careful around those edges. And I also want to show you a, a quick tip or trick. If you've got your mouse there and you're trying to draw a straight line, you can just let go and hold down the shift key and then click the next place you want that line to end. And when I click that, you'll see that it automatically fills in. So that's a quick and easy way to kind of do a quick uh, straight line if you're trying to cover a big area. You can also increase the mouse and I'm going to hold down shift and I'm going to come over here and I just fill that in. So uh, keep that in mind. That's a quick and easy way to just paint uh, a straight line uh, in a mask. Okay, now I've got that sand masked in pretty well. I'm gonna go into the adjustments. And what I wanna do here is drop the exposure because it's a black sand beach and I just wanna make that black sand look a bit blacker. So I'm gonna do about a, uh, basically drop it about a stop. And then in blacks, I'm gonna drop that a little bit as well, like a negative 15 or something like that. And so if you look at the before, there it is before. And after, there it is. Again, be careful around the edges. I probably need to clean that up a little bit uh, because you want to make sure that you're smoothing uh, that transition between where I've darkened it and where it stand kind of bright. I probably need to refine those edges. So just take your time and be careful. Uh, now that I've done that, and I think that sand looks nice and dark and rich, which I love, I'm going to do a quick color hit to the entire photo. So I'm going to go into toning. I'm in highlights. And the saturation level, I'm going to do about a 35. And the hue I'm going to pick is about a 16. So let me get that up to 35 and 16 on the hue. So I'm just putting some warmth into the highlights across the entire photo. The reason I chose the entire photo is because I do want it to hit the sky and that area there. But also you can see where the warmth is reflected here on the beach and also some in the waves. It's going to pick up wherever the highlights are. And so I've basically just taken some of that area that was not quite warm enough and made it a little bit warmer, including some of the receding waves uh, as well as the waves that are crashing in the distance. So there it is before, and there it is now, slight bit warmer. So now that I'm on color, I'm going to pop into Color Harmony, and I want to show you Mask AI. So if I click on Masking, Mask AI automatically identifies various elements in a photo based on AI, of course. So you click on that, and it will start to figure it out. And you can see it's identified sky. So I'm just going to click sky and it will automatically create the mask in the sky for me. And that's basically perfect. Now, there's other things that identifies and transport. I had to click on that when I was practicing this. It actually identifies that, la that left iceberg as some sort of transport, which of course it isn't. But um, the uh, mask AI has identified the sky very well. And what I want to do is go in here and make some adjustments. So I want to add some brilliance to that sky. And I'm going to add some warmth as well. So something about a 14 or 15, just kind of warming that up. In split color warmth, I'm going to go at about a, uh, about a 19 or 20 here. 
and cool I'm going to do like a negative 9. So if you're not familiar with split color warmth, if you drag to the right on warmth, it basically increases the warmth of the warm colors. And on cool, if you drag to the left with cool, it increases the coolness of the cool colors. And so going to the right on warmth makes warm warmer, left on cool makes cool cooler. And what I'm doing is just doing that uh, counterbalance or that interplay of the cool and the warm tones, which is just something I like to do. Uh, but then also in uh, this color balance section, which is amazingly powerful, I highly recommend you spend time on it if you're interested in learning how to really control color in an image. But I'm going to come in here in the cyan and red, and I'm going to go to about an 18 or 19 or so in, towards the red in the highlights, and I'm going to do about a negative 8 or 9 here on the magenta also in the highlights. All that's doing is creating some red and magenta in the highlights, right? And so if you look at color harmony overall, there it is before. Remember, this is masked into just the sky because I used the Sky AI uh, mask that it was uh, automatically generated. So there it is before and there it is now. And the reason I didn't do the entire scene is because I did with toning the entire scene, which I think gave a nice little bit of warmth in the reflected sand and that sort of thing, but I wanted to bring up the warmth in the sky and I felt like isolating the sky with color harmony worked fine, partly because I had uh, used toning across the whole image and so it had already brought up some of the warm tones in the sand. But again, if you needed to, you could go into toning and be specific. In this case, I didn't feel like I needed to be, but I did need to be with color harmony. So one more time before in the sky, a little bluer, a little tamer of a sunrise, and after a bit more pop without really overdoing it. Uh, and now that I've done that, I wanna go back and do one more thing, uh, and that's with Accent AI. And this time I'm gonna demo the last kind of mask, which is a radial gradient. So it basically allows you to click and drag. It says here, just like you did with the radial, or excuse me, with the linear, but the linear creates a straight line that you can tilt. This creates a circle or oval kind of shape. So you click and drag outward and it creates this shape you will notice that the mask is applying outside. I invert every single time. Uh, I honestly wish it would default to being like this, but you know, it doesn't. Uh, but then you can make adjustments here so that you can sh uh, change the shape, make it more oval or more egg shaped. You can tilt it like that. And again, this is a gradient zone, same as on the linear tool. And I wanna kinda collapse that a little bit, but I want to make the section bigger. So I'm gonna do something about like that. I'm going to maybe make it a little bit more egg shaped, maybe pull this in a little bit and maybe pull in that gradient zone a little bit. As you can tell, I'm basically isolating that iceberg and this is where you need to be careful and you really need to make adjustments that uh, you think are really going to work fine and well for the, what you're trying to do. But I'm basically kind of isolating that and you know, you may need to refine it, but I've done that and what I want to do is just bump this up and again i'm bumping it up pretty high i'm going to like 60 or something here which is incredibly high i think for accent ai but i think it works here if you take a look at it the before and after there is before slightly bit tamer and that one to me is more of the subject than the one on the right i like this scene because there were two different shapes slightly different positions they seem to kind of go together but the one on the left is the one that i like more and i really want to pop it a little bit more Accent AI is great for those targeted bits of like pop in an image, as long as you're using masking, which is how you do the targeted part, right? So there it is before Accent AI, and there it is now, slight more pop, and um, a little bit of the outside around it is, uh, is popping as well, which I think looks fine here. So one more time before and after, I think that looks really nice, and that's how you use a radial gradient. And the last thing I would do is just come in to develop and this is going back to what I said at the beginning, which is global versus local edits. All these masking things I did were local edits targeted and specific to accentuate or accent certain parts of the photo. Um, I'll often go back to develop and just do a single overall global edit. So here I might just come in and do a tiny bit of contrast, maybe pull down the highlights slightly and maybe bump the exposure just a little bit. It feels like it's a little bit dark. So this is all just... It's a global touch up, just kind of a last little umph, a last little touch to the photo. It's not gonna make a huge difference, but there it is before, slightly darker, and there it is now, slightly brighter. And that's my whole edit. So let me show you the before and the after. The before, it was very blue, and it was a nice sunrise, but most of the, 
the warmth is concentrated in that thin sliver on the horizon. But now with targeted masking, I've got a lot more warmth coming across the whole sky. I've got some nice warmth in the reflected sand, and I've also got some nice targeted adjustments on the icebergs uh, to make them pop, and also to keep that sand looking pretty dark. There it is one more time before and after. And if I do the little sliding window, which I love to have, you can see that, I mean, really you have a massive, massive impact on the photo without overdoing it because everything that I did, most of everything that I did here was targeted and specific, which is again, what masking is all about. So hopefully this gives you a good idea about how I use masking in my own edits and why I think it's such a critical skill to really take your edits to the next level. And if these kind of things are interesting to you, join my newsletter on my website, which I send out every week or so. It includes tips and tricks every time about how to make better photos. Hope you found this video helpful. If you did, hit subscribe and I'll be back soon, my friends. I appreciate it. You guys have a great day. I'll talk to you soon. Until then, adios.